The Jordan Love situation is interesting because he finally got an opportunity. He was sitting for a while, and now you got to pay him. The question is, when do you pay? We go back to the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott. Jerry Jones is a billionaire a few times over, but sometimes doesn't seem like a great businessman when it comes to contracts, certainly for Dak Prescott. The longer you wait, the more it costs you. Unless one of the sides is not convinced that they want to continue with this relationship. Does Dak want to continue this relationship? Now, he makes a lot of money off the field because he's the Dallas Cowboy quarterback. If he was Carolina's quarterback, no one would care. He's the Cowboys quarterback. He's going to make a lot of money. And the money that he'll make uh, you know, in endorsements will probably be similar to what Mahomes makes with the Kansas City Chiefs. But we keep pushing the can, kicking the can down the road here. And eventually, Dak Prescott, you just play the waiting game. Unless they're going to let him just play. Now, they can't you know, franchise him. So they're kind of stuck in this situation unless Dak goes, you know what? Maybe I'll go someplace else. Maybe I don't want to deal with the bright lights of the Cowboys where everything is scrutinized. Maybe. I would think that Jerry is going to eventually pay him. The question is, do you just pay him now? What if you had paid him uh, two months ago? You know, because everybody else is getting their money. So Jordan Love is going to make more than uh, Trevor Lawrence. Because he's next up, he's going to make more. And then two is waiting. I mean, this is how the game is played. And then Dak is going to be waiting. It's inflation. It's, it's quarterback inflation. You're going to have to pay. The Green Bay Packers are in a great situation from the standpoint of maybe they found their next franchise quarterback. So if you get 40 years of great quarterback play, how many other franchises can say that? Now, they didn't get as many Super Bowls as you would expect over that time period, but Jordan Love was great last year. Do you go all in on somebody that, okay, he was great for one year? I'm always hesitant because I've seen a lot a lot of these quarterbacks, they're like, wow, that guy's good. I mean, Mac Jones was good in New England. They went to the playoffs. I mean, that's the thing. How long do you wait before you go, okay, I've seen enough? Have you seen enough with Tua? How much will be enough with Brock Purdy? Because there's either you like your quarterback and you give him $50 million, or you don't and then you move on from him. There's no middle ground unless it's like Baker Mayfield who had bounced around and then he found kind of a sweet spot there. That's sort of what you're looking at with these quarterbacks. You either love them or you're going to let them go. But if you keep them and you love them, they're going to continue to cost you. And it keeps, you know, it's it, the meter is running here. And with Jordan Love, have they seen enough? Are they sold on him? Was last year just the start of something? Was it an aberration? Do they need to see a little bit more? Packers GM Brian Gutekunst. We're very down the road as far as we know that he, he's, he's our franchise quarterback and, and we're ready to move forward. That's not, it's not like we're trying to make that decision. But at the same time, we want to put the best team around him. We can. And uh, we want to make sure that, um, you know, there's, there's certainly the structure of it so that we can do what we need to do for our football team moving forward, not only this year, but in years to come is very, very important. Again, like I said, it's, um, this is just part of it, not unexpected. And um, we'll work to get it done. And, and um, you know, hopefully he won't miss too much time because it is, you know, um, we got a lot of work to do. You know, we, we think we have a very good football team, but we got to come together as a team. And, and he's a big part of that. So him being out there is important for us. He's 25 years of age. Now, it's a cautionary tale. You could look at Carson Wentz with the Eagles, Jared Goff with the Rams. I mean, Jared Goff had a $135 million contract extension. He averaged uh, 21 touchdowns and 14 and a half interceptions over the next two seasons. So, well, L.A. wanted to get rid of him so badly, they attached two first-round picks in order to offload his contract in a deal that brought Matthew Stafford to the Rams. So it did work out, but... Teams extending their quarterbacks, and you're not quite sure. Now, Jared Goff has played well with Detroit. Carson Wentz is a backup with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I know he had the knee injury against the Rams. He was never the same quarterback. You see it. It happens. It's magic. And then all of a sudden you go, is it real? Is what I'm seeing real? Is it sustainable here? That is going to be the question for a lot of these GMs. Caleb Williams down the road. 
When do you see it? He's going to be the starter from day one. And then when do you go? Like, you know, when Denver traded for Russell Wilson, and you keep thinking, what were they seeing? They had to see something we didn't see because Russ diminishing returns here. Seattle was happy to get rid of him. And one of the great deals in NFL history. And then all of a sudden he gets to Denver and it's as if he forgot how to play the game. Now he's in Pittsburgh and he'll probably hold on for dear life for the starting job there. It happens quickly. Success does and so does failure. And if you're going to give somebody $50 million a year for five years, you're tying up and that most of the time a lot of it's guaranteed. So you have to be right. Because if not at that position, it's devastating. And Brian Gutekunst is talking about the roster. You fill in the roster. You want to, like what the Bears did with Caleb Williams. They, very few quarterbacks, number one picks have gone into a situation where you have that much talent that Caleb Williams has. So he's got an all pro wide receiver. He's got another receiver, Roma Dunze, who might be an all pro wide receiver. You got a good tight end. They bolstered the offensive line. You know, they my my big question mark will be, you know, the consistency with coaching, offensive coordinator, those kind of things. But Caleb Williams looks like he's ready to go. But Bryce Young, they did not there was there was no infrastructure there for Bryce Young in Carolina. And he was exposed. I if you know the roles were reversed and I put Bryce Young in Chicago and Caleb Williams in Carolina, Bryce Young would probably succeed. It comes down to that. It's that tricky. It's just like Mahomes with Kansas City. <laughs> he went into an ideal situation. He got to watch for a year and then take over a team that was really good. And you got a Hall of Fame coach. You stumble into Tyree Kill. You find out that Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in football. Like, that's the magic with all of this. There have been guys who have come into the league where I go, that guy is going to be great. David Klingler, he was unbelievable in college. Went to the Bengals. You probably have no idea who I'm talking about. But they weren't ready. The team wasn't great, and he didn't live up to uh, the billing. Tim Couch. Tim Couch, number one pick. And I thought, okay, he's a really good pocket passer and then went to a bad organization. That's the tricky part of all of this. Is Dallas a great organization? You know, do you want, is Dak going to be the difference? You don't even have C.D. Lamb or Micah Parsons. So these contract negotiations, when you talk about distractions, distractions to me are contracts, playing time, what goes on in the locker room. I don't look at Travis Kelsey dating Taylor Swift as a distraction. Now, once he drops a big pass in a game against Buffalo and uh, he had just gone to her concert, then it'll be a big deal because we'll make it a big deal. But Rasheed Rice... Racing cars, that's a bigger deal. Uh, Harrison Butker's comments at a commencement speech, that became a big deal. Uh, Isaiah Bugs uh, with cruelty to animals, like those are distractions. Those are big, bigger deals. And contracts, it's what you're getting paid. Are you a leader when you go into the locker room? Do guys begrudge the fact that you're making a certain amount of money? You got a situation with the Jets. Now, that's a distraction. Aaron Rodgers doesn't show up and makes it seem like, hey, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It is. And it really was an embarrassing situation because all you have to do is check with your coach. And you weren't playing, so you had no distractions to plan your vacation over the summer. All you had to do is say, coach, when is off-season workouts? When's mandatory camp? Okay, I'm planning on a trip to Egypt. 